Wonderful. Thank you for accepting to do this interview about Tachyon Chambers, which has several objectives. One, to help understand our history in relation to tachyon energy and tachyon chambers, and to expand our understanding of the energy healing with the tachyon chamber for all the guardians and the people who come to do sessions. There are two parts, history and background, and how it works in healing sessions. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. Wonderful. So, first of all, in order to set the scene, can you explain what tachyonic energy is? Where does it come from and what's its role? Okay, tachyon energy is coming directly from the source. Tachyons were the first uh, particles that were created uh, when this universe came into creation. So this is exactly the reason why they are our direct connection to the source. Uh, tachyons are particles that uh, travel faster than light and are thus uh, connecting us with higher dimensions. Okay, so we think that tachyon chambers can be found in different galactic civilizations in the universe. What's the purpose of these tachyon chambers? You mean the galactic tachyon chambers? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, the chambers that they have, some, some very advanced races have chambers that are much more advanced than what we have here on this planet. Uh -huh. And uh, those chambers are able to do uh, almost miraculous healings. They are able to shift matter. They are able to align matter to uh, the perfect archetype. So there are very advanced technologies which will be introduced to this planet at some point after the event. Okay. Um, did tachyon chambers exist on Earth before the quarantine was enforced 26,000 years ago? Yes, of course, uh, in Atlantis, uh, tachyon chambers do exist on planet Earth. Okay, okay. Pyramids have been discovered all over the world, not just in Egypt. Is there a link between pyramids and the tachyon chambers? Uh, there is a certain link, of course, because uh, pyramid uh, structure is a sacred geometry structure which has uh, very interesting uh, capabilities and uh, this is uh, one aspect of uh, technology that uh, can assist in um, harnessing tachyon energy. Okay. Uh, still on the subject of pyramids, what's the difference between an initiation chamber and a tachyon chamber? Initiation chamber, the purpose of initiation chamber is to uh, generate a quantum leap in consciousness. And this is what some advanced uh, tachyon chambers can do. Uh, but those chambers are not available on planet Earth uh, also for safety purposes because human beings are not able to, are not ready to operate such advanced technology at this point. They are not spiritually pure enough for something okay. like this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The veil of the matrix absorbs a lot of the tachyonic energy. Without this veil, we'd all be bathed in tachyons. What changes will there be for us all when the veil has dropped? Okay, when the wheel drops, uh, tachyon energy will begin to infuse human bodies and will begin to restore health in, uh, and also emotional and mental harmony in the surface population. So this is what we can expect after the event. Okay, and at the exact moment of the end event, what will the tachyon chamber's role be? Okay, uh, the tachyon chambers that we have installed on the surface of the planet uh, will conduct very strong energies and will actually ground a lot of tachyon energy uh, for the whole planet, and this will help stabilizing the grid so there will be no massive earthquakes or drastic cataclysms at the moment uh -huh. of the event. Good, good. <laughs> As we're still in the same quant quarantine situation now, um, the tachyon chambers are still not operating at their highest potential. Can you tell us more about the update or changes to the tachyon chambers after the event? They'll work at their full potential? Uh, they will be upgraded first energetically, and after some point, the Palladian Palladian teams will give instructions to the owners of the packing chambers how to upgrade the chambers, and they will also receive technological upgrades at a certain point after the event. Okay, thank you, thank you for that first part. So let's move on to the next part, which is a little bit longer. How sessions work. Each tachyon chamber that's activated by you is quantumly linked to a wormhole that's created with a tachyonized crystal orbiting in a research satellite, a Genesis 2, 
at the level of the veil in order to create a passage for tachyon energy. A wormhole is characterized by two extremities, one of which is the tachyon chamber, uh, and we all wonder where the other extremity is, please. Okay, one point is the tachyon chamber, and the second point is the genesis to uh, uh, space station, which is beyond the veil. So uh, this wormhole connects the source of tachyons at genesis to crystal and the tachyon chamber. Okay, can, can you tell us a little bit more about how this works, the connection? It works through quantum entanglement. So uh, tachyons which are on the chamber are quantum entang entangled with tachyons which are in the tachyon chamber. And this creates a certain link through which tachyons can flow freely, regardless of the layer. Okay. We'd like to know a little more too about the galactic teams that manage the tachyon chambers. What's the function of the Palladians during the tachyon chamber sessions? Uh, okay, each uh, tachyon chamber has a, a Palladian team dedicated to that chamber, and uh, while there is a healing session taking place in the chamber, those Palladians assist with healing energies and balancing energies through their own quantum technologies. They project certain energies through the wormhole into the tachyon chamber and assist in the healing process taking place in the chamber. Okay. Can there be other beings who accompany a tachyon chamber session? Uh, yes, there are sometimes other races such as Sirius or positive Andromedans uh, participating, and there are many times also angelic uh, beings who assist in the healing process. Okay. Um, are there beings who participate in the care of the tachyon chamber outside the matrix? They are outside the matrix and they project energies into the matrix. Okay. It's, some people see and feel beings working on them during the sessions and have, have, can have painful, uh, a, quite a painful sensory experience, like your body's being moved physically. Can you explain how they do this? Okay. Um, the healing teams send strong energies through the body and through the energy fields, and sometimes this creates a detoxification process, which can be slightly painful because toxins are leaving the body and after that a uh, strong healing can occur so you can have a very, quite intense experience sometimes while you are laying in the chamber not always but sometimes that can be quite intense yeah yeah F when a tachyon chamber is activ activated a vortex is created and an angelic being anchors itself to the location of the tachyon chamber what's the role of this angelic being uh, that uh, angelic being is the actual guardian and caretaker of the energies of the chamber vortex, and it manages the energies flowing through the vacuum chamber and takes care that everything is uh, happening as harmoniously and as positively as possible. Okay. We can say the tachyon chambers have two main functions. Uh, in fact, the energy channel that's created never stops. So we have the energetic treatment for the person and the action that it has on the planet too. Um, can you tell us more about the action on the planet, the light grid? Okay, uh, whenever there is an active healing session, the energies are flowing primarily for the person being healed. And whenever there are no healing sessions, the chamber is working uh, as an energy conduit for the energies that go directly into the planetary energy grid and help stabilizing and harmonizing the energy grid, whatever is needed at that particular moment. Okay, thank you. And in addition to that, the chamber has an energy radius of about 30 to 40 kilometers around it. What happens within this field that for is, the neighbors? That is the uh, uh, the size of the uh, energy vortex around the chamber. And inside of that uh, energy vortex, there is a strong energy which harmonizes and purifies everything. Okay, good for the neighbors. Let's get to the energy treatment for people. Uh, the treatment starts once the person lies down under the pyramid and there are many factors that come into play during a session in the tachyon chamber, like our an emotional state at the time, our free will, our consciousness, if you can let go, uh, and also astral conjunctions, etc, etc. Generally speaking, tachyons do not heal. They're targets to provide the energy necessary for the body to heal itself. Uh, tachyon energy is simply the natural catalyst for this self-healing process. Oh, one could say that it's not the tachyon energy that comes to work on us, but it's our own body's energy that will synergize with the information of our original essence, which is found in tachyon energy. 
our energetic bodies are dynamized by this tachyonic energy and our vibratory rate increases significantly in order to allow the transmutation of low frequencies with the information of our frequency of origin. The work continues in the three or four days following a session where our vibratory rate goes down to, in this period, little by little. What do you think of this simplified description? Oh, you need to use your own guidance uh, whether this is true or not. You need to go inside and feel your connection with the source and see if this is true. Okay. Can you explain what the origin essence is? Uh, I cannot explain because this is a term I don't use, so I don't know what... Ah, what so what term do you that. use? For what? For getting to, back to who you... Your, your origins, who you are... You know, your higher self, your soul. Your I higher mean, self, okay. So This has been explained so many times, I don't think it's necessary to answer this question. Okay. Um, some people feel that the work starts three or four days before the session, even three or... I've even had people say longer than that. Can you explain why they have the feeling that the work starts before the session? Okay, as soon as the person you know, makes an intention to go to the chamber for a healing session, the light teams already start the work to prepare the person uh, for the healing session and the chamber to get the right combination of energies for the healing session. Okay, okay. So, talking of our different energetic bodies, uh, according to your diagram with the seven planes of creation, each divided into seven subplanes, that's 49 subplanes from the densest physical plane to the highest divine plane. Um, to di divide this into two parts, there's a first lower part from the densest physical plane to the lower mental plane where negativity can attach itself like planes under the influence and regulation of the matrix controllers and a second higher part from the higher mental plane to the divine plane where we're on the brightest planes where no negativity can attach itself. Do you agree with this distinction between lower planes that can be manip manipulated by dark forces and higher planes that cannot? Well, yes, I agree. Wonderful. Can you explain the energy work of the tachyon chamber for the lower planes? Uh, okay, what tachyons do, they flow uh, through the lower planes, through the physical body, through the etheric body, through the astral body, through the mental body, and they harmonize and align everything. They decrease the amount of primary anomaly and they increase the, uh, the amount of light in those, uh, in those bodies. And, and for the superior planes? Uh, they actually also flow through those higher bodies, through the soul body and through higher bodies and through higher dimensions uh, of the soul essence. And they uh, increase the light there also and actually make the connection between the soul and the personality stronger. Okay. Can you explain how tachyon energy works with the ego triangle? Atma, Buddha, Manas? Well, okay, actually what tachyons do, they, they uh, activate permanent atoms uh, on those higher planes. And through activating permanent atoms, they uh, increase something that I would describe as an ascension rate. They uh, manifest more of the energy of the divine will for ascension, so they actually accelerate the ascension process. Okay, so between our past lives and now, as we live in a matrix, how do negative memories impact our energetic bodies? Okay, each memory, each event that has not been cleared completely creates a signature imprint into the energy bodies. Mm -hmm. And some of those imprints uh, are not cleared between the incarnations and they get passed into the next incarnation. So while we live here in this incarnation now, some of those imprints are still here. And uh, one part of the healing process in the chamber is to clear those imprints. Okay, yeah, that's... So, and in a collective way, all the people who do tachyon chamber sessions emanate an energy into their surroundings, the tachyon energy, and into collective consciousness. Can you explain this process to us? It is very simple. People who have been in the chamber has received a certain amount of uh, tachyon energy and they begin to radiate a certain amount of that tachyon energy to their surroundings. Okay, yes. What energy work happens between two people who do a session together? For example, a parent or and a child or a couple or friends? Okay, their energy field gets harmonized and we can expect their relationships to become more harmonized as well. 
Okay, so it's positive. Yes. For a person who's just died, how can tachyon chambers help their soul get to other planes? Uh, we, we, just, we, we only put photographs of people in. Um, and unfortunately, as long as they're still quarantined, putting the picture of the deceased in the chamber doesn't bring them out of the matrix. Do you agree with this? Okay, actually, it can uh, help this transition of the deceased person uh, into the light. Uh, it will, it will not, uh, the person will not manage to completely escape the matrix, but it can uh, is, uh, escape from being captured by the dark forces uh, on the etheric plane and the lower astral plane. And they can, this can help the person getting into the area where it's relatively calm and peaceful surroundings on the astral plane. Okay. And can you tell us about the benefits of this for sessions for a pregnant woman and the baby? Taking uh, the tachyon yes, shape. actually, this can help the mother uh, to ease the process of pregnancy and it can also help the child uh, in anchoring more harmoniously into the physical body. Okay, so it can help with labor? Yes, with the whole process. Wonderful. Um, why is it useful to do sessions in the tachyon chamber at an infant stage between uh, up until the age of 12? Uh, okay, it can, uh, for each age, there are certain challenges and certain development challenges happening and the tachyon chamber helps uh, reducing those challenges and harmonizing the process. Okay. You, you recommend between three to six sessions. How does the work evolve during the course of the sessions? Okay, this is just a general estimate uh, because it is not practical for people to expect to, to have more and more more sessions, except in certain cases. But I would say if you do this regularly, you can have more lasting, longer effects in the tachyon chamber. And in the months that follow? The same. The same, okay. Uh, tachyon chamber is not a magic wand or a roller coaster. Can you comment on the fact that working mindfully on a daily basis is important? Okay, tachyon chamber is just a tool that can help you in your own process, but your your own decision is still the key. So if you do not assist actively in the healing process, whatever the chamber will help you heal, you can uh, you can disturb again with your actions and your decisions. So if you work together with the chamber, uh, it can have quite uh, quite drastic, quite magical results. If you work against the healing energy of the chamber, you will ruin those results. Okay. S some people don't feel anything during the session. H how can you reassure them that the work is still being done? Okay, there is no condition that you need to feel anything for the work being done. Sometimes the work is done on a subconscious level, sometimes the work is being done on a cellular level. Uh, it does not always produce uh, visible effects. But if you are using the chamber long enough, you will definitely notice a, a difference, notice a change. And what advice can you give to make the most of a session? Well, first, don't have any expectations or preconceived ideas how the session should look like. Just be open-minded yeah. and yeah. relaxed as possible and just surrender to the process. Mm. Yeah. And in the context of the quarantine that we're still experiencing, is it possible for our subtle bodies to cross the veil during a tachyon chamber session? Actually, this is possible. You can have an out-of-body projection into the mothership. Some people have experienced this uh, because we create a certain, I would say, quantum uh, transmission between the chamber and the motherships which are above. And such things can happen. Okay. We, we've seen an explosion in the number of tachyon chambers in France recently. Is there a, a link with France's key role in the global libera liberation? Yes, of course, uh, a lot of work is being done uh, energetically with France and especially with Paris uh, Goddess Vortex. And this, of course, has assisted in creating this very strong interest for talking chambers in France because France does have, it's one of the key, of a few key countries for the planetary liberation process. Okay, great. Can we have a look at the current situation with the COVID virus? Can tachyon chamber treatments transmute the messenger RNA information of vaccines and eliminate the toxicity of the vaccine compounds? Uh, I would say the tachyon chambers decrease the uh, harmful side effects of anything that happens to the human body. It does not change the chemical composition of the body, but uh, the tachyon energy does harmonize the energy flow through the body. It harmonizes the chakra system. It harmonizes the 
uh, immune system, which then deals with the whole situation the most effectively possible. Okay, so the vaccine blocks the person energetically. The vaccines influence the connections between a higher self and a human personality. What, how can the tachyon chamber help this problem? Okay, uh, there is nothing that can really uh, uh, cut your connection with your higher self. Without connection with your higher self, you would die. So there is always a certain amount of connection. And an attack and chamber simply expand that, that connection, harmonizes yourself with that connection. Okay. Um, do you have time for a couple more questions? Okay. There's a lot of information, and believe me, I'm asked all the time about med beds. Uh, and uh, some people say that they still exist and they're used uh, by the positive military. Is this possible before the event? Uh, again, I will say med beds will not be available to the surface population before yeah, the event. Yeah, like before. Yeah. So, what are, what's the difference between a med bed and a, a tachyon chamber? They are, of course, two different technologies. Uh, med beds are actually uh, devices which rearrange the atomic uh, structure of the physical body, and they can, with this uh, heal organs, they can rearrange organs, they can grow missing limbs. Where tachyon chambers are more multidimensional, they work on all levels of creations at once. Mm, different planes, yeah. So um, we're coming to the end of our interview. Do you have any specific message for the surface population of the planet at this difficult time? Uh, yes, definitely. It is very important at this point to hold the light, to anchor the light in your own life, in your own body, in your own energy field and around you, and also to use common sense. We are in the period of anti-madness. Do not uh, focus too much on it. Use common sense. Yes. Common sense is very important. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Cobra, for taking the time to answer all these questions, because this information really is a, a big help. To, um, I'd like to thank Gwen from the Pleiadian Garden for uh, in Brittany, and for Eric, who's helped record it all. Um, and uh, who knows, maybe I'll see you at some point soon. Um, I'm going to stop recording now. Okay.